Hey folks, Jonathan here. All right, another day. Unfortunately, uh, it rained last night real hard, and I didn't even realize it because I passed out from eating too much ice cream. But uh, anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and get the piston cleaned up and start getting this engine back together, seeing if we can uh, possibly get it running today. If it don't, don't rain on us, we'll, uh, I'm sure we will. But uh, it's not going to take that long to put it back together. So start cleaning up parts and everything. And uh, we'll roll with it. All right. Okay. I'm going to show you you want to get this piston down in. But the it's tapered a little bit down there. But it actually goes down an inch, inch and a half before it begins the 7-inch uh, uh, pole. It's you know, pretty much a good ways over that before. So I took these fender washers and bent them. And made them where... It would uh, compress the ring until it got down to that lip, and it seems to be working. I'm putting it in my hand, so it's going in really easy. Uh, just had to push the rings in around, start them down here. When I get it down, I'll show you what it looked like. My ring compressor, I thought I had one big enough, but I didn't have one big enough to go seven inches. And plus, it's down in there, and I'll show you that in a minute, and you'll see it's kind of hard to do with a ring compressor because. It's got to extend down inside, so I'll give you a look here in a sec. All right, so it looks like it started about an inch down. I hope this camera will focus. Uh, but I'm so afraid I'm going to break a ring that I went ahead and just decided to do it like that. So it worked out good. It's in there. We're going to go ahead and start getting stuff hooked up here. And uh, we can take our shims out now. But there's a, these rings are half inch thick, and there's less than a half inch between here and where it started at. So that was able to help us out. So. Now I can flatten my shims back out and use them for fenders. All right. All right, folks, I know most of you have probably seen grease cups like this, but I want to show you how they work uh, in case somebody hasn't seen them for the historical part of it. Anyway, uh, this was pre, probably 1923, because I think 23 is when Zerk fittings come out, which is a regular grease fitting. And uh, these work really well. This cap unscrews. You just pack some grease in it, and I'll show you. I'll take it off real quick and show you. Yeah, you can see there's grease inside of it. I just packed some in it, not a lot. And now I'm going to turn it and tighten it up until it hits the grease. And you're going to see what happens on the inside. All right, so when you tighten it, as you can see, it forces grease into your bearing. So we're going to clean these cross screws out and clean everything out. And Get this back together all right all right folks you know how sometimes you do something so stupid you just you want to hit yourself in the head with a hammer but uh you see i'm rolling the engine over with this ball with this pipe wrench and it's rolling easy but it's kind of hard to see my valve over here to get it adjusted because we're not doing the timing all we're doing is the opening uh the timing's already set because of the eccentrics not been moved on the crankshaft so we're just doing the distance so we're trying to get that right and so i've really all i've got left is tighten everything up make a gasket for here make a head gasket and bolt, bolt them on and then we can you know i'm going to move it and test it but uh like a dummy i come around here with that pipe wrench and i put it on there and i went to turn it and it just instantly like a piece of paper it just broke so uh hmm i got the parts that's the good thing and i can fix it but you know, over 100 years this thing's lasted, and then I got to be the one to tear it up. So, uh, you know, that kind of thing gets to me, bothers me pretty bad. But you know, I'll live with it because I, you know, like I said, I'll fix it and make it look back decent. Uh, I guess, you know, I sort of like repairs on old stuff when I get it. Well, maybe 100 years from now, somebody will look at it after I get done and say that, you know, I've done a good job on it or something, you know? So, we'll see how it goes. But anyway, we're working on the valve and we've just about got what we need done. And uh, uh, I ended up putting O-ring in here temporarily until I get some rope seal. I didn't have anything small and I didn't, it didn't really want to fit in there good and I didn't want to force it. And so, here's what I'm going to do now. This only had two nuts on it. And it really needs to have a jam nut on top and bottom because you don't need to tighten this down on this rod. It needs to actually be a little bit loose on that rod. Not enough to make a lot of noise, but just enough to, you know, to be able to ride in there without it uh, 
holding it off of the seat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go take, I've got some other nuts like this, and I'll just throw them up on the lathe and, and uh, narrow them up. Uh, my main thing is I wanted to make sure there was going to be clearance for them. So I'm going to take this back apart and I'm going to add, uh, or maybe move this nut to the bottom and add another one or two more on it. Uh, I just want to be able to lock it and leave it a little bit loose and that way it will uh, it'll work correctly and uh, it's early I think it's uh, 1150 so it's not even noon yet so we should be good uh, to have everything together if I've got the gas material which I, I've got some compressed graphite I can use if I don't have any regular uh, material so I've definitely got gasket material Compressed graphite is just kind of hard to work with, but uh, or maybe it's too easy to work with, and that's why it breaks so bad. So anyway, I'm going to go narrow up a couple nuts for that, and everything seems to be working out good. Time is good. <sighs> Terrible. Next time one of y'all sees me, just punch me in the mouth. Uh, so besides that, everything's okay. I think we'll be running here shortly. All right. All right, folks, we got it uh, plumbed up, and uh, we just put it into the T there, come out. So uh, we're ready to try it. I'm going to uh, get, get a fire going. It's been raining the whole time, and uh, everything's wet, but we're going to try to get a fire going and see if we can run this thing. Excited about seeing whether it's going to make it or not. All right, All right so we've got uh, 15 pounds. We're going to wait until 20. When we get 20, we're going to try it. See if it'll run. It's not going to be long. It's climbing quick. All right. All right, folks. We're going to give it a try. See if it'll run. Quite a turn. Definitely off on the town. 
right? Yeah, it's not right more than that. Put the same on both sides and it ain't supposed to. Okay folks, uh, not running. Uh, we have figured it out that the eccentric is moved. It's not where it's supposed to be. So just like right now I got it on bottom, bottom dead center and we should just be barely opening for lap and we're not. It's way, way too far open. When you turn it on top dead center, same thing on the top side. So we definitely have got to change the eccentric. The problem's going to be getting it loose. Uh, this pulley is in the way. We we'll have to go in and get the bolt loose on it and try to get it out. Let's just hope we can get it to turn. So we'll see. But uh, there's no way around it. It's not going to run. It's trying to put steam on both sides, but at the wrong time. So. Uh, just going to have to keep working on it, but we'll, we'll figure it out here shortly. All right. All right, folks. So I actually loosened the eccentric and got it moving and I turned it to where I thought it was right. And then I looked down and I see where it had been tightened at one time, right where I'm at. So for some reason, I believe this thing got moved and I don't know why, but we're going to tighten her down there and give her a try and hopefully that'll take care of it. We'll see. All right, so here is uh, top dead center, and you can see it's just starting to open. There's a little lead in there, probably maybe too much, but we're going to go to the bottom dead center and look and see what the lead is there, and or the lap is what it's called. But uh, and then we'll know what it looks like. we're a little bit low so we need to raise it up open this up and close the other That's perfect right there. We don't have a lot of lead or a lot of lap, which we really don't want a lot. Tore my gasket, of course, that graphite, compressed graphite is just not a good gasket for that. But we're going to lock it down where it's at and then try it again. We've got uh, about 35 pounds of steam. Uh, so we should be should be fine. I just added some more water to the boiler. So I've been keeping up with it while I'm working on this. So. I think that'll work, I hope. I don't know how it got off or why it was off, but the timing was definitely off on the eccentric. So let's give her a try here. All right, folks, we're ready to try it again. Uh, my O-rings ain't enough to uh, compress in there. They're not wide enough, so it's not working too well there. But either way, let's see if it'll run this time. Cross your fingers.
Yeah, besides my leak here, it's not going terrible. I've only got, uh, well, we're down below 20 pounds. I didn't have much of a fire. I, I put some wood back in it, so probably shut it down and let the pressure build back up, and then we'll run it again. Before the water's running in that thing. All right. I'll try again here in a few minutes. All right, folks, let the boiler build back up. Uh, remember, this is a 10 horsepower engine. That's a 4 horsepower boiler, so, you know, it's not going to handle it like it ought to. Uh, and, of course, you know, until this thing runs a while, it's not going to run, you know, as efficient as it can be. And we still got to get our, get us some rope seal in that, get them O-rings out. That's the good thing about it. Uh, the rope seal, I can drop it down and put the rope in and raise it back up. The O-rings... I'll cut them off because they're uh, you got to take it apart to put them on. So uh, anyway, how this thing got out of time, how the eccentric got turned on the crank, I have no clue. Uh, it may have happened. Maybe the valves was you know the system was stuck and they tried to turn it or I don't know. But it, it don't make much sense to me. Uh, I was under the assumption and assumed that it was going to be where it was supposed to be, but it definitely wasn't. Okay, folks, we're going to fire it up again here. Hopefully you'll be able to see it's uh, getting dark out. Give her a try. I've only got about 30 pounds, but I don't want to wait until it's completely dark. So. Folks, besides my leak around that rod, it's actually doing really good. And we will be fixing it next. A lot of water in our line. It'd be a lot better if we had uh, had more pressure, more heat in the boiler. Right now, we just don't have a lot. a lot of my leak there. Seems to be doing better. I had this loose because it wasn't, it didn't seem like it was lining right. So now I tightened it up and it's about took care of my leak. Must have been out of line. We'll continue to tighten it as we go. Seems like our eccentric might be a little loose. Really nice and quiet, no knocks. Shaking her up one time here.
that'll drain the boiler. Yeah, just a little bit of uh, noise on the, sounds like maybe on the eccentric, we'll work on that. But as for the engine itself, it's going to really get checked. Well, that's it. We'll do more to it. But for now, it is running. It's running pretty good. First time in probably 80 or 100 years. It's hard to say. Uh, you've seen the rods on it, how rusty they were, how pitted. Now, as you can see, there's no no leak at all on this one. I think we about got this one. Yeah, it's leaking some. Still leaking some water out of it. So we'll, uh, we'll get that taken care of. Get some packing in it. This got regular packing in it, but this was bigger packing, so I had it. I like it. It's really nice thing. We'll get a lot of oilers on it and probably clean it up. Maybe paint it. Who knows? We'll figure it out. All right. Appreciate everybody watching. And until next time. Bye.